Welcome to the Leatherman Recreation Sheath video, where we're gonna take this one. This is a SOG. It's just bratted together. When you put it in, it's wobbly, and then the loop is really long. I just really don't like this thing. So what I'm gonna do is change it and make something different. I have came up with a rough sketch here. Um, like always, it's just a super, super five second sketch, you know. Uh, that's kind of what I want it to look like. Sort of like the friction sheath I did for this one. Uh, this just drops right in, doesn't shake out. Well, I'm sure by this part in the video, you've seen a clip of the finished product and we'll see how it's made. So I had a great suggestion in the last video to show what tools I'm gonna be using and kind of see what they are. This tool right here is a stitching groover. It really makes a nice line so you can put your stitches inside of it. It's also a really great tool for making cool detail. And I'll show you that one and what it can do later. These are the kind of punches I use. My favorite one though is just a regular actual punch. It's fantastic. This one's super easy to pull out of your work. Um, it goes through really nice. Um, this is really handy to have. This thing called a rotary punch. Um, this is great it's for snaps. Four holes I can't get to with the other ones or if I just need to have a weird size hole. For clamps, you know, we're gonna use these little guys. Possibly the large ones, I'm not really sure yet. Grooving tool, uh, this one's pretty good. This is a number two. Everyone uses <laughs> different things to cut their leather. These scissors cut leather really nice. Ass, so this is what I use to punch my stuff. So I made it just a couple months ago. This is called a burnishing tool. A little bit of water or beeswax to the edges and then you can use this and the friction will actually make it really nice. For stitching, I use a wax thread. I believe this is a synthetic thread. It needs foot oil. It darkens it a little bit. It also uh, makes it a little more pliable. It'll kind of bring it back to life. This stuff <laughs> that I spilled in my last video just gives it a little bit of a shine and it hardens it a little bit, which is kind of cool to give it a little more stiffness. This stuff is called barge cement. I've used three other kinds. This stuff seems to work amazing. Okay, we've got a piece of leather here. We want the rough side on the inside. I'm just gonna get a quick layout of what we want here. Our design is gonna look something like it. That's what we're going for. Put this down, taper down. Make sure is that I have room to grab here. I like to leave a good inch, inch and a half on the top part from here to here, uh, just to make sure you can actually grab the tool. But then make sure this leather can fold up and over and actually reach past your inch or inch and a half so you can put your snap here. On the bottom here, I wanna make sure that I've got enough room to bring down and, and put a nice stitch on. I'm gonna leave this top wide. So we're gonna come back around here. I like to make sure that the top of this Leatherman, when this folds over, is no more than one inch above your belt line. I use scissors on these because, well, to me, scissors are 10 times easier. Lay this down, put my Leatherman in. All right, now, this piece here will cover the stitching on the bottom. This covers the ears. Dip our piece of leather in. Anyway, um, I've never actually seen that. It is bubbling a little bit right here and here. Um, some people say soak it till the bubbles stop. Um, it's ready in my opinion. Let's take it and put it inside a saran wrap um, just to keep the water off of it. Well, except for I got water on it. Keep the water off of it. And also I wanna build this up just a little bit. That way it doesn't have such a tight fit. Now, we've got our oversized piece of leather here. What you wanna do is basically make sure that when you press down and start kind of halfway forming it around, that none of your other piece actually sticks out. All right, just kind of make it oversized a little bit if you can. I like to go ahead and just take the actual burnishing tool and go around the edge. You know, nothing special, just give it a nice crease. Now that you've got it into a nice little pouch and you've got the edges creased a little bit and it's still super wet, you can get an idea and over exaggerate what your design is. It looks like my ear is gonna come out around, down, over, and then around here. We're gonna get it a little smaller so it's easier to clamp. Top piece can come down to here. Wait, let's go ahead and mark this. Right there, all right. And so when we come down about an inch from here, it's gonna be there. So if the bottom is here, we can put our snap here 
and that would be perfectly fine. The size of hole is gonna be roughly an inch and a half is usually a pretty good belt size. I like to make mine about a quarter of an inch wide and just see if we can get some clamps on this thing. Now we're gonna be going basically on the seam line anyways. Otherwise you wanna um, put leather up underneath here so that they don't mar the leather. Cause when these do dry with these on here, they do make little dark spots. And since it's kind of like held down on the bottom, I'm gonna really go for it and really kind of create a crease. And then that'll make it just kind of stay on its own a little bit. We're gonna be doing this in one day. So I'm gonna try and just blow dry it and see how that works. As far as blow drying goes, just try. Now this thing's not totally dry, but it will hold a shape as you can see. We blow dried it for five minutes. Go ahead and make a little bit of a half moon shape here. I'm also gonna come down and in just a little bit and then round this over. Um, go and get a nice decent little round in there. And then we're gonna go ahead and start our ear. So our ear will come down. So you can see that I've got a rough pattern drawn on this piece. Now we've got it here and we're basically going to transfer this onto the back plate and then we will be holding it in place while we form the top over to here. I'll do that right now. So let me go ahead and cut that out. That's kind of when things will really take shape. So now, my stamp is not a uh, professional stamp by any means, so I kind of have to uh, work with it sometimes. Let's put it that way. So I hold it down. All right. And there she is. So hopefully you can see that. Anyway, there's my mark. Well, right as I was about to glue this on, I realized that I did not do what I had done in my drawing. This little piece here, I'll glue this onto here and then I'll sew it real fast. Then I'll put these two together. I put paper in between the two glue pieces just to make sure they're not gonna stick together. And I'll just go ahead and hit it right there. And then cramp down and I like to just kind of rock it back and forth a little bit, release, and then you should have a nice hole. I'm gonna stick it in here, give it a few hits. So I think I'm gonna go with that actually. <laughs> so I'll end up cutting this off. Put this up in here. I'm gonna go ahead and retrace this line. Right. This will be my scuff mark line. So there's my new scuff line. So I can bring this in a little bit, round it up, and then come across and cut that out and then come back down in here. Well, now that the glue set up a little bit, we can go ahead and start uh, punching holes. to being ready. So these guys just go together now. Uh, just make sure that I try and do a good job. Uh -oh. Now what we have to do is go ahead and line up, bring this down, cut this how we want it, and we should be done. So there's where we're at right now. Now 
we've got it basically stamped all the way around. We'll stitch that up. of that. Okay. Okay. And now that snaps on nice. Alright. Now, I drew the design on the front there. All right, I'm just gonna hold down. Now that all those are done, we can go ahead and sew it. That's what it looked like after stitching. Uh, so I'm basically going to cut the holes for our belt loops. So here's the finished product of the Leatherman sheath. This is the uh, the way it looks now. Um, I put a little bit more of the uh, sheen on, and there's the back. So it turned out pretty good. I've worn this for a couple days now, and I really like it. It's a great fit. Heavy duty, that's for sure. So yeah, there it is. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Sorry it's so long. I'm trying to figure out how to get them shorter, but um, there's a lot of stuff that goes into this. Anyway, have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.